there can be lots of reasons or intentions or relations, whatever it may be. And so we, we each have our own things that we bring to the fire and add to it, right? Most importantly, coming up to the fire is no different than greeting another person, right? There's a spirit in that fire, just like there's a spirit in anyone else. And so if you can get into that rhythm of starting to greet things the same way you would greet a human and treating them no differently, it can have the potential to come alive. Do you see what I'm saying? You're making relations, right? If you're getting ready to meet the person that the first date, and this might be the person you're gonna meet for the rest of your life, be with, right? Maybe it helps to bring some flowers to make a good first impression, right? You see, you're building a relationship. It's really important. You see, so try to, if you get into the habit of those things, what will happen over time is new things might come to you for reasons you're working with the fire. Or the fire might tell you something. Next time, bring me this, and I'll teach you this. Who knows? Do you see? But that can only happen if you make those relations, if you open yourself up. By first getting to know it, treating it no differently than someone else that you might love. Make sense, kind of? So for now, just energetically offer some tobacco to the fire. Picture there's tobacco in your hand and just greet it. Ask to make relations. A practice that I do, for instance, very often before I go to a ceremony, I already see the whole ceremony in my mind's eye what the people might say or what they might do or whatever. You see, then I'm connecting with the spirit of the thing that's behind the influencing hand. Connecting in the future, that's where spirit is. And then just seeing what happens, what doesn't happen, whatever. You see? But that's a good indication for me that spirit is guiding that ceremony, for instance. The only limitations are what you place. If you think you can't do that, then you'll be right. If you think you can do that, then you're opening up the potential. Do you see? And then you build a relationship with it. Um, we're just going to connect in for a moment. Close your eyes if you like, or stare into the fire, or take a deep, few deep breaths in. Do your normal grounding calling in your protective spirit or your loving guides as long as you do so with a respectful heart, loving intention, feel free. And now that you might feel yourself a little grounded into the earth, a little present with your breath, we're going to do an om this time, we're going to allow the Aum to work a little differently. With this Aum, instead of grounding in the earth, visualize the earth coming up into your heart and ground into your heart. Okay? Take a deep breath in. Aum. You can feel it resonating in your heart, ground there. Your own little personal earth space. Deep breath in.
Remember this feeling connected with the Om. Just going to do our protective mantra, calling out to creation and into our higher self. Ong Namu, Guru Dev Namo, in one breath. If you don't know it, just feel free to feel into that calling out to the creation and calling to your higher self, allowing those energies to meet. Deep breath in. Hands to heart center. Solidify this energy one more time. Deep breath in. Just sit for another moment, noticing your energy. Just find a specific point of that energy and just sit with it. Try not to follow it anywhere else. Just sit with it. Realize you are where you need to be. Nowhere to go, nothing to do after. Just feel into the space. Allow it to expand a little. Coming from that grounding in your heart that we practice with the Om, and then allowing it to expand outward a little. Feel the sphere of your influence, your aura, as it resonates out from that grounded heart. And then allow it to expand to the circle, touching all the other lights around the spire. And then bring yourself back to your sphere of influence, your own personal sphere. Grounded back in your heart, allowing that heart grounded energy to ground into Grandmother Earth. Open your hands up, facing to the sky. See what you can feel. See what you can sense into for a moment. Bring yourselves back to this circle. When you're ready, open your eyes. This is today's talking stick we'll pass around. I want to thank all of you guys for being a part of the circle tonight. Um, We're under the full moon of Leo. important time we're coming up on with the spring equinox going connecting the dark and the light where they come into balance so tonight we'll be working into that a little bit I saw something the other day it said uh, the word human broke it down, Hugh and man. Hugh translated means a form of light. And man is like manifest, you see? And, and that's kind of what we are, right? But what happens is we get caught up with what's familiar and what's familiar for us for most of us is really on our physical sense side, right? 
For some of us, it's our thoughts creating those forms. Um, but whenever something happens to us, we tend to really focus on the negative and let it stir with us and stick with us and get real dense in us. And, and there's a reason for that. It's because through our thought, this form of light is being manifest to learn lessons. And the lessons you're learning at first are going to be really dense because you're learning the form side. And over time, as you develop that form side, you learn the power of release. You do that sometimes with things that don't serve you, right? Over time, you learn how to let them go. They no longer work or maybe relationships, the attraction fades away. Right? It's the same thing with your lessons. You see, if you can realize that you are that light coming into the form, life can get a little bit easier. As you work through different little things you attune to, you see it because you're so connected with your form that you're transitioning from this one thing to this next thing. But you're neither of those. All you're doing is aligning and then attuning to specific experiences. Do you see? That form of light, the form down here, the light up there, and you're both. But if you can start to see things from that light side, that's what positivity means. To be more positive doesn't mean that you're always happy or that you're really excited about the thing you might be going through. But if you can pull back to that light and not take yourself too seriously, not be so personally attached to these types of things, you can get to the spirit behind it just like we were talking about the fire tonight. Getting to the spirit behind the fire, making relations with it. So remember what we did in the beginning of using the Aum to, instead of grounding into the earth, to ground into your heart. Remember that, okay? Do you remember that feeling or sense into it? What we're gonna do with this meditation, this first meditation, we're gonna basically ground into the heart and then we're going to reach out to the light we're going to build a channel coming back we're going to become one with that whole thing and we're going to go through that process a couple times that's it feel free to follow along if you want to drift away drift away also feel free to laugh at and not listen to your limitations. In other words, I can't do this because I'm not a good imaginer. I can't visualize. I can't feel. I can't. Those stories are just that. So just let the stories fade away and come back. What if you could? Okay? Close your eyes. Ground yourself into the earth. Feel your energy go down into the earth. But now bring that earth energy up into your heart. Feel an earth sitting where your heart is. And notice yourself sitting on that little earth in your heart. Ground there. Om. Remember, each time we ground into the earth and force it again 
with the Om inside of yourself, silently saying to yourself, Om. Sit here for a moment at the center of your heart and just be. Now visualize up in the sky the full moon of Leo. With its rays shining out. Choose one of those rays and allow it to form a channel coming back to your grounded heart. Feel the light inside your heart. Allow it to radiate out until your light encompasses the moon. Now pull back these energies to your heart, releasing the energy of the moon. Sit here again, grounded in your heart with the Om. As you sit here grounded in your heart, feel the aura around you, the circle of your influence, pulsating, maybe a few inches, maybe a few feet. Pulling back to the grounded heart. Sitting here when you look out at the moon, you realize it's just a reflection of the sun's light. So let's travel further out to observe the brilliance of the sun. Feel its radiation. And just as you did with the moon, select one of those rays and create the channel back to your heart. Ride that channel back to your grounded heart. Feel the radiation extending out from your heart. Allow it to expand further and further out to a point where it encompasses the sun. Your spirit and the sun's spirits merge. Just one bright light. And then pull back your energy again, releasing the sun. Come back to your heart center, grounded with the Om. 
offering out a salutation to the sun. Grounded fully in your heart. sitting upon the lotus. Allowing your breath to connect. Appreciating your form of light. Next, we're going to reach out even further. We're going to connect out to the star Sirius, the star of initiation. Feel its radiance, its influence. Notice whatever color you see. And in that brilliance, choose a ray and ride that channel back to your heart. And with the Om, ground yourself again. Right into your circle of influence. your point of focus. Then again, allowing it to expand out beyond the thinking mind. Way, way out there to the influence of the star Sirius. Allowing your lights to merge. Allowing your spirit to become one without doubt, without limitation to the realm beyond thought. And then pull your circle back with the Om to your grounded heart. And this time, using your own intuition, come up with whatever way you want to send gratitude out to Sirius. Your own personal salutation. Releasing the influence of Sirius as you come back to just your circle of influence. Grounding with the Om. And next we're going to expand upon the form of your ground. Instead of grounding just in your heart, feel yourself grounding in the heart of humanity. All one united consciousness. one collective form. Allowing the Om to hold you all together and then open up your circle to that light, the loving light. It's in the space in between. It's wherever you attune and align to. See humanity bathing in this loving light. And 
no judgment. There's nothing to fix, nothing is broken. Allow the magic to go where it needs to. Have faith. And then bringing yourself back to your own heart again with the Om. Centered in your heart. One more time we're going to expand out the form. We're going to connect in with the heart of Grandmother Earth. Notice Grandmother Earth bathed in this light. If you listen closely, you might notice the earth beneath your feet singing with joy. again, pulling back to your own field of influence, your auric field, and with the Om, grounding yourself in the heart, and now that we've gone through this, we're going to present you with a series of questions. Before we do that, take one more moment to appreciate that at its core, this loving light is just a spirit, just like the spirit inside of you. Yet because it doesn't relate or identify with form, it has an innate wisdom and intelligence. And through its infinite ways, now allow it to soothe, heal, and protect your sensitive energies. And while you breathe in this protective, soothing intelligence, We're going to present you with these questions, these inquiries. When you expand your sphere of influence, how might your presence best embrace humanity? Try not to think of the answer. Allow the light to come alive. When you expand your sphere of influence, how might your presence best embrace humanity? Next inquiry. With your presence, how might this community flourish? those might have arose in you, keeping them 
grounded in your heart. How do you wish to manifest this love and light in your own personal life? Allowing these three things to connect, you might notice a beautiful crystalline form come to light. be your own symbol. Allow it to guide you. As you release the stories of the past and you allow the spirit of the future to take its space so that you may manifest your form of light in the present. And then with this last ohm, come back grounded into your heart. Om. Allowing your heart to ground back down into Grandmother Earth. From the earth to the heart to your head. Connecting the threads. And as you're ready, wiggle the toes, blink the eyes, adjust the hips, whatever it may be. So last time we passed this, you all kind of warmed up a little bit. We'll pass it again. See if anything came up for you. Exciting, challenging, positive, negative. Anything you'd like to share from the meditation, feel free. If not, just pass the talking stick alone and along. The idea in these things is, is not really the thing that we're doing. It's taking it and applying it out in your world and seeing that it's not the specific thing, but it applies across the board. Right? And so, in order to realize the truth of something, for a while you can do all kinds of great techniques to bury it or push it away or, or say, not now, but you say, not now, my friend. Do you see? Because when it comes time, if you want something to give you its truth, you make it its friend or your friend, right? So if you want the mosquitoes to go away and you keep trying to fight them, what's going to happen? Try talking to them. There's a spirit behind that mosquito, not the individual mosquito, but the collective. And say, not now, my friend. You see, treat everything the same. What's happening is, I think why today we're focusing a little bit going from the form to the light. Maybe for some of you it might have been a little weird having the heart be a form instead of a light. But the idea is the first, the main light that we deal with within the sun that comes through us is the soul's energy. And the soul for you is a collective 360 degree being. Right? And what you choose 
is of that big pie, before you come into this life, you choose a slice of that pie that you want to experience based on certain attributes and deficits. So it's just as important to discover the deficits as the attributes if you're trying to figure things out and get a broader perspective, right? The idea is this is the path. The path is you got to let go of the thoughts. Because while you're having the thoughts, you think you're connecting, but as Jeremy showed us, he wasn't paying attention. Because you're in your own little world, you're not being present, you're in this other dimension that you created. Do you see? As you let go of those thoughts, especially the charged ones, you can tell which thoughts are more predominant because they stir emotions. They can guide you towards things and what might be things in your life that you want to work on later. But the idea is, let go of your thoughts to get to the higher mind. The higher mind is located in the heart. And from that heart, what you're learning to do, what we're all learning to do, is to apply a feeling and a consciousness. That consciousness is, how are you perceiving certain experiences? Can you lovingly accept them so they can teach you? Can you then feel into them to create that space in it so you can go out beyond the initial impulses of that teaching? Most people think they've got it or they've already got it figured out or that there's this one answer and they can become crystallized and that form hardens. The idea with the heart, after you've created that foundation and you're getting used to Looking at things, the idea with that feeling too is eventually you're going to let that go too. So you can go out even further and go from the soul of the thing, which is connected to the heart, to the spirit of the thing, the influence behind it that's creating this form, that light. Do you see? And eventually, as you get beyond the heart, which is the form attaching to the things, and you get to the spirit of a thing, you eventually merge. That's where true inspirations come in. And what will happen then, if you do it in that process, then you just reverse the order. You then need to bring it into, you need to manifest that light, bring it into this physical realm. You do that through that logic side and through the emotions that charge it up. Do you see? So it's a continual process of going back and forth, back and forth. And that's all we're learning how to do. There's always next steps. So I'm just telling you that because a lot of times I think people out there teach, just go into the heart and see what happens is, the way that I understand it, the heart has a shortcut where you can connect right over to spirit and so you can get some great epiphanies. But it's really hard to bring that back because you're taking that shortcut. You got to go through the experiences and there's a slower path, but through that slower path, you're going to learn how to start becoming a co-creator instead of just a responder to those stimulating feelings or inspirations and things like that. Do you see? I'm trying to simplify it. It's very difficult to simplify something like this, but I'm just trying to show you some different paths. Go ahead. I have a question. Um, loving stimuli. It, yeah, it's neither. It's neither, right. It, and, and so what you're trying to control is not that. Correct. But your response to it. Correct. Because you are not co-creating yet. Correct. No, no. You are not co-creating yet. So you're not adding to it? So no, I'm saying your whole premise started with the first statement that said, okay, I, I get that I'm co-creating. You are not co-creating yet. You are allowing your subconscious to influence the present moment. You're not really in charge of your life yet. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts and your predispositions and your mm -hmm. stories and all that is really diluting your potential. Do you see? The idea is to be all right with not being the co-creator yet. So you can be openly accepting what's coming to you at your own pace. 
You can always put space and time between the stimulus and the response. So that then you can see how to work through these things. And as you work through these things and you find the virtues in them rather than the vices, it's easy to love the things that you agree with. Right, exactly. <laughs> but as you do that, you're building character. And through that character, you're positioning yourself better for as you do learn how to start to settle and not be so attached and personalizing the, 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 these things of the form and not allowing the present or the past to so much influence the present, what will happen is then the future will start to light up. And through that, you can then bring in the energies and then you're better equipped to be a co-creator because you're not so swept by your individual desires and things like that. Do you see? So the idea is you're, you're learning, we are learning maturity and we are learning disciplines so that we can interact with the true energies. When we start to see into a new reality beyond these illusions in the physical realm and in our emotional realms. You don't want, you're, you're not trying to grow past things. You're trying to fully experience them from a 360 degree view, from all different angles and perspectives. You want to fully when someone is being materialistic, I don't say stop being materialistic, I say be more. So you can learn through that and then finally make your own decision. I'm not trying to change that person. If you have strong desires, follow those desires. Do you see? If you try to just say, oh, I don't have these desires, or oh, and you just, all you're doing is burying things and you're desensitizing. And if you desensitize, you might think you're getting there, but once you get there, you're not going to be equipped and it's going to really stir you up. Do you see? The hard part is as you're doing these things, you become more sensitized. You start tuning more into the things of the earth and, and, and you start taking them personally. You start calling them things like depression and war and anxiety and OCD and all these fun little names because you're giving it a form because you think you understand what it is. But if you could see the virtue in these things, you could start moving beyond them, not because your intention is to move beyond them, but because you see them as true gifts, a gift that you chose in this lifetime. What you're trying to do is be a detective and discover what was the purpose in that. It has a loving purpose. Every single thing at its core has a loving purpose. The only way you're going to get to that is to stop naming it, stop giving it form and start loving it. And let the love teach you. So for this next meditation, unless anyone has anything they want to add, feel free. Okay. Are you saying, look, uh, find the virtue in the vice? I, I, what I'm saying is, all things have a negative and a positive. The negative isn't bad. What happens is between that negative and positive, it gives a polarity for you to do the work. So you need the negative. Do you see? But the idea and the negative of that form is to eventually get beyond it to see the spirit of the thing. You can do a little bit of a shortcut if you start to look at things from the soul's perspective instead of the individual perspective. You're not trying to get rid of your individual perspective. You're just trying to see that, hey, maybe there's more than what I'm individually doing. And if I stop trying to think I've got it figured out or it's all, all about getting answers and things like that, the things will reveal themselves to me much quicker. Do you see? If you allow certain things to just be a mystery along in the process, much can come to life, to light. For some of you that are a little bit more logic-based, maybe try a different angle and say, okay, this, but now what? Yes, but what's beyond that? Yeah, you, you see? In, in other words, don't be 
satisfied with your answer, what you're going to have to do is just burn out your brain if you're not willing to do it. So for this next meditation, I'm going to pass this around. Just take a flower petal. Just choose one and pass it around. Don't look at it too long. Just pick one and go. Trust your intuition. Otherwise, we won't, won't get out of here in time. Um, there's going to be three parts since we're here with the fire. We're going to do a little fire meditation slash part, part of a ceremony, I guess you could say. What we're going to be doing is first we're going to connect in and we're going to release something to the fire and we're going to release it through this flower petal. That flower petal is, that you choose is going to go into the fire. It's going to represent that thing you're releasing. The reason this is important symbolically is that maybe you can notice the beauty in that flower petal. I want you to also notice the beauty in the thing that you're releasing. You're not casting it away because it's bad. Do you see? Otherwise, it's going to just return back to you. So in this, we're going to call up, release something. That's part one. We're going to put it in the fire. And then part two is we're going to allow something new to come in. We're going to ask the clouds. Instead of you saying what the new thing is, allow some room for not knowing what might be in your future and see what might pop in. It might be something that you couldn't have thought of. The third part of that ceremony is we're going to bring it in by then taking a pinch of tobacco, giving gratitude to that fire. We're going to go from the fire of purification to the fire of transformation and illumination. And as you give that to the fire, then that thing that you created space for and that new thing can come back in. The thing you created space for will be transmuted, that energy. We're going to give it to that new thing and allow that to come into you. That'll be basically the process of the ceremony. Take a moment, close your eyes and connect in for a second. Remember the grounding to the earth and the ohm to the heart. Through that ohm of the heart, you're letting go of the thinking mind and connecting into the higher mind located in the heart. The one that allows you to lovingly accept and feel into all the things that come to your circle of influence. Whether it's through a thought, a charged emotion, a person, a story, a lesson, a stumble, an accomplishment, whatever it may be. As you stare into this fire, you might have noticed one fire, but that there's also many sparks of differing brightness. This is no different than you and your soul's journey with humanity. with your intentions and your desires. Call forth the fire of purification. Bring to mind something that you are ready to release from your energetic field. And with this, place all of your intention onto your flower petal. The 
feel that thing that you're releasing going into the beauty of that flower petal. And when you're ready, give that flower petal or blow that flower petal into the fire. You can go up to the fire and then just return to your seat when you're ready. Give it a loving thanks. Right now the fire is gathering up and purifying all of these things, all of this beauty that you've gifted. After you have given your flower, sit back, close your eyes for a moment. See if you can notice the subtle changes in your energetic field. And while you're looking inward, see if anything else, some other stagnant energy still feel stuck energetically give that to the fire as well allow your system to purify grounded in your heart with the om Take a deep breath in and see if you can discover the space that's newly been created from that energy that you've just released. Notice how you feel. You might feel empowered. Or you might even feel drained. No judgment. Just notice how you feel. You might feel heavier, you might feel lighter. It might feel unknown, because maybe you've been carrying that thing with you for so long, that it was a familiar friend that you've just released. But with this purifying fire, most importantly, with that space that you've opened up, now there is room to look into the potential of the future to see what positive item might be brought forward for you. And we'll do that in a moment. Close your eyes if you haven't already. Picture that petal laying in the ashes. And as you send it your energy, 
a bird flies up out of those ashes through the fire. And as you sit here, follow that bird up into the clouds as it fades into the clouds. In the mist is the spirit of the future bringing something forward for you. Something new that can be brought down into this space that you've created. Allow the clouds to form into a message for you. Allow that message to come forward with something new positively sitting in those clouds. And as that's forming into the clouds, allow it to sit there for a moment. Give it some space. And as you do, the fire of purification begins to become the fire of illumination. With the mind's eye, notice the fire transforming from a yellow to a deep orange. And then with glimmers and hints of green, Finally, a deep purple. You can sense these flames as they actually connect up to the stars above, allowing the light of Sirius to initiate you into the ceremony. Ask this fire to come forward and transmute that old energy that went up into the clouds to give it a new life, to bring something new into your present life. Call upon that bird in the sky. See it starting to circle there again finding its wings and then it dives down into this fire and with this the power of transmutation feel your grounded heart Connecting in with this fire. This process will be completed when you're ready to accept that new thing into your life. When you're ready, come forward Grab an offering of tobacco, 
thank this fire of transmutation and in doing so it will gift you this new thing into your energetic field. When you're ready, come forward for your offering of tobacco. Stay in silence. Give your sacrifice of tobacco. From your grounded heart of that light manifest, ground into the earth. thing that you brought in, grounded into the heart, is your loving acceptance and your feeling, but allow the greater light to ground into the earth. In other words, keep it moving. Don't become stagnant. I'm feeling a couple of you holding it too much in here. And I don't want it to over, over stimulate. So ground it into the earth and allow that light to work through you. Close your eyes again and sense into the new thing. See it coming alive. See it in your thoughts. See it in the subtle realms, the colors, the scents. See it in your knowing. See it in your future. See it in your varying relations. See it in your varying interpretations. How might this new thing look at different experiences in a whole new light? How might there be a vice and a virtue there as well? Another minute or so to sit with it, ground it in your heart with loving acceptance.
Closing your eyes again. Notice it's swirling around. Maybe it finds a home at a certain point in your body. Allowing your breath to connect with the new. Not just the new form, but the new space that you felt. And then starting to feel into the crisp air and allowing that to circulate around your body. Feeling the gentle breeze, cleanse your energetic field. See if you can simultaneously feel a sense of revitalization and calmness. Close out this meditation. I'm going to speak a mantra to you. Allow this to sit with you and see what might arise. Failure never prevents success. Difficulties develop the strength of the soul. The secret to transmutation to not take things personally and to stand ever ready. I am that, that I am. Said the full moon of Leo. And with that, I allow love to be my teacher. This Om grounded in the heart. All together now. Take a deep breath in. Allowing that light to ground down into the earth. Sending out your loving light anywhere you want. To any one person, place, thing, or the collective. To whatever community, wherever. To any river, any field. 
forest, mountain, or the like. We thank the full moon of Leo as it reflects the sun brought forth through the light of Sirius. We have 15 minutes, so bring yourself back. I'm going to pass this around one more time in case anything you'd like to share, feel free.